Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this cool looking gift certificate inside Microsoft Word. And you can imagine like this white area is the final paper size which you will just crop and you will put it into uh, some envelope and hand it to someone else. Now for the inspiration for this tutorial it comes from this printable item from some random Etsy shop. I really like this layout so you can see there is a clear inspiration in the layout between this one and mine recreation. So let's try to create the same thing inside Microsoft Word. I will jump into the blank document and while the pay final paper size will be some kind of square paper, we will most likely print it on the regular paper. So I will jump to layout and change the paper size to be a letter which is 8.5 by 11 inches. And I want to have the paper size to be some kind of square. Now what will be the size? I don't know but I've just googled square envelopes and this is actually the first size which I found and you will see they offer a dozens of different sizes. So I've just take a look at how many colors are available for each size and it seems like 6.5 by 6.5 inches they have a lot of colors so maybe this is like a standard square sized envelope I guess so. So we will go with 6.5 by 6.5 inches for the envelope so we can get the actual paper to be maybe 6 by 6 inches. So I will jump to my document and I will draw a new rectangle so insert shapes rectangle. And I will draw it in any size just because I can jump to the format ribbon and change the size to be 6 by 6 inches like so. Now I want to make the margins of the paper in a way that I cannot write outside of this of this area. So what I will do is I will open the layout and I will open the margins but when I have this uh, shape selected I cannot open the custom margins just because this is grayed out. So I have to click outside and select margins custom margins again. Now I will use the help of calculator. So the width of the page is 8.5 inches minus 6 is 2.5 divided by 2 is 1.25 for left for left and right. And for the actual height it's 11 inches minus 6 divided by 2. It's 2.5 inches from top and from the bottom. So now we have those margins set in a way that you cannot write outside of the paper. I will move this to the to be on the very left top position. So I will right click and select more layout options and set this to be 0 inches based on the column and 0 inches based on the paragraph like so. Now there is also a second way how to show the final paper size. I can jump to file options and in the advanced section there is a section called uh, show document content and in here I can enable show crop marks. If I do so click the OK button you will see those small crop marks which will actually show me what's the content inside the margins. So what I can do is I can select this rectangle and hide it for now. I will jump to home ribbon, open the select selection pane and just hide this rectangle. Ok if I jump to my previous document you can see I have those four lines of text so I will press the enter key multiple times and type in uh, from sorry, uh, to amount and expires. I will zoom in a little bit and I don't want those labels to be all the way to the left of the paper so I'll drag this slider on top in the in the ruler like so and I want those lines next to each line and I can do it in multiple different ways but I guess I will use tabs for this one. So there is this very small square on the left side which I can click until I will see an icon which looks like the L key L shape like so then I will click my mouse inside this ruler to add the tab stops like so and I can click and drag to move it to a different position maybe this one and I will add a new one on the right as well like so. Now what this does is I think if I can uh, show the invisible uh, characters by pressing this button the P is just a new new paragraph I can press the tab key on my keyboard which is this small arrow and the cursor immediately jumps to the first tab stop if I press it second time it will jump to the second tab stop. So I will do this for each line like so. Then I will select all four lines and I will double click this very small icon inside the ruler to open the tab dialog. I do have two different tabs. I can see the positions. I can even change those. But what I can do is I can change the leader down here. Now there are some pros and cons for this solution. It's actually not drawing any extra special you know, shapes but it's reusing the characters from the currently used font. So if I select this it will just type in a lot of underscores in between those tab stops. Which is I guess fine because you can change the font to some different font and you will see that the character is updating as well. So if I change this to maybe I don't know robot to light it will also change the look of the line which is great. It kind of matches. I can even change the color of this line by changing the font color I guess right. 
or I can do anything else. Of course, I am limited in the n amount of different characters by, do by those four different, like I can choose underscore or dots or what else I can choose. Oh, I accidentally changed this for the first character stop, so I have this set to none. And for the second one, I can choose, for example, dots if I want. Now, the downside of this solution is this is like meant to be a visual connection between the left side and the right side. So maybe left side is some text, the right side is the page number, like so. But if I start typing in here, you will notice that the you know actual characters are moving. They are not under the under my new text, which may or may not be a problem. It depends on your or your needs. So the second way how to add line is to actually use underline. So I can select everything, double click this character symbol again, or tab symbol again. For the second one, I will change the leader to none. And instead, I can just select this part and set the underline like so. So I can do it for each line. Now the advantage of using underline is I can change color, but I can also change from many different types of underlines. You can see it's like bold one, maybe dashed or dotted, maybe this wave. I can even change it to more underlines and I have some crazy shapes like this double, double wave or whatever else. I can of course change the underline color. I guess we will change the underline color, but in a minute. And I also guess it's a time for a first step. So when you want to change the underline, and you can see that it kind of disappeared for some unknown reason. I have to change more underlines and set it to this one in the black color. Okay. So if you want to change the underline, you will just select each line and change it, which kind of takes a lot of time. So the second second uh, way how to select all four lines would be to press Control, Alt, and Shift buttons on the keyboard. And now that you are in the this special kind of uh, selection mode where you are not actually moving the the cursor from left to right but you can draw a selection rectangle like so so you can select like a, like a rectangle you can select all four lines without affecting the the labels on the left so the uh, shortcut is Control alt shift and then you drag the cursor now i can open this menu again more underlines and i can change the underline style to something different maybe this one and i can even change the color maybe to this one and you will see it will affect all four lines, which is great. Maybe just a one more uh, tweak to our text. What if we want this text to be right aligned? Well, that is actually pretty easy. I can select everything. And in here on the top left, I will just click until I will see this reversed left, which is the right aligned tab stop. And I will just add it in the very same way, like so in here. Now everything is kind of looks kind of different just because we have three different tab stops, but we only have two tab symbols in here. So I will add one more tab before the before the label, like so. And you can see that those three labels are right lined. Now the reason why I haven't started with the first one is that Word tries to be smart, and when I press the tab key before you know before the first line, it will actually not give me a tab symbol. It will move the left indentation, the first line indent. So I will not press the tab key, but instead I will just copy this tab symbol from the second line. So now it works. If I hide the invisible symbols, you can see that those uh, labels are now right aligned and we have this dotted line, which is exactly what we want. So we can continue with the other parts. And the other parts, I promise, will be much more you know, simple and fun to play with. So we will draw a new text box. Insert, shapes, text box, which is right on top. And I will draw it in a fairly big size and I will write in a gift for you. Now just for my myself, I have to change the language to English. And I will increase the font size to maybe, I don't know, like 100 points and change the font to be Sensa, which you can download for free from the Font Fabric website. It's actually a paid font, but they offer a free version with limited number of characters. Here you can download it from free. It kind of works for our case. For the actual text box, I will open the format ribbon, set the fill to no fill and outline to no outline. I will make the text uh, center aligned and maybe make it a little bit smaller just so I can see both lines and maybe I will add a new, new character, like, you know, new line like this. I will open the paragraph line spacing and maybe set this to be multiples of like 0.9 just so those lines are closer to each other. And just so I can see everything more clearly, I will show the rectangle which is now a little bit off just because it was moving with the enter keys so i'll move it on top again select the format shape right click and select format shape and set this to sorry not format shape i will select 
layout options, more layout options, and set this to be zero by column and zero by paragraph. I will select this uh, layout options and set this behind the text, like so, and set the fill color to be actually white and the outline to be no outline. Now what I will do is I will set a different page background color. Before I do so, I will set the color theme to something that will match our picture, which will be kind of red orange. So I will set the colors to be red orange. And for the page background color, I will select maybe this pinkish one. Now it doesn't make any difference, but I like to set the drop shadow for the rectangle. So for the rectangle, I will right click and select the format shape. And in the format effects, I will set shadow to be some kind of predefined shadow, but with a little bit more blur and in some dark, yeah, a dark red color like so. Okay, I kind of like it this way. Great. So the only missing piece is the image, which we can download from the uh, Pixabay website, done with the someone called Nolis Five Three Seven. I will just click the free download button. And I've already downloaded this image into my images folder. So inside Word document, I will just say insert pictures and insert this watercolor picture. So insert the picture. I have to click this layout options and set this to be behind the text, of course. And right away, you know, I really like the placement. But if you don't like the placement, you can, of course, select the image, make it maybe a little bit smaller or bigger, move it to a different stop, you know, a different position using your mouse or arrow keys on your keyboard and such. Okay, so I kind of like our result. Maybe I will make this text just a little bit bigger, like so, 100 points. And if you compare it to my previous creation, you can see that there is this little bit of small border around the around the border of the page. And we can do this as well. We can add this as well. What I will do is I will make sure that the selection pane is visible by se clicking select selection pane. I will select the rectangle and just copy paste it. Then I will right click and select the more layout options and make sure that it's on the very same position as the previous one by setting the absolute positions to be zero for both horizontal and vertical. I will you know, get rid of the shadow by jumping on the format ribbon, opening the shape effects, shadow, no shadow. The fill should be no fill, but the outline will be some different color. And just so I can see it clearly, I will change the weight to maybe like, I don't know, three points. Now there are, you can of course resize the rectangle by just you know, dragging those those corners, but it would be hard to align everything properly. So what I will do instead is I will use the keyboard shortcut and I will press shift and arrow keys. And if I press shift and arrow keys, I actually change the size based on the center. So left arrow key will change the width to be smaller and down arrow key will change the height to be smaller as well. I can use the up and right arrow key to just, you know, make it bigger. So I can use those four arrow keys together with the shift key to change the size of the shape which is great, but the, you know, it's, it's changing the size too much. So what I can do instead is I can press shift and control key. And now the increment will be much smaller. So I can make some fine adjustments for the size. And when I like the size, like, so I can just change the outline to have a normal width, like maybe one point, and maybe I will change the shape outline to some gold color. I kind of like this one. Okay. So we have everything in place. And probably the only thing which I would like to change is to move all the text a little bit down. I can click anywhere like so and press enter key. But if I want some finer adjustments, I can instead just change the font size for this line by changing this a you know increase and decrease font size. By doing so, I can make some small adjustments for the line spacing just so I can move those, you know, down or up those lines. Okay. I kind of like this one and I guess we are almost finished. I will hide those crop marks because I don't need them anymore. So I will jump to options and in the advanced, I will just disable the crop marks, which are here. And if I would jump to, to print this document, so file print, you will notice that the background color is missing, which is perfectly fine just because we will crop this anyway. But in case you want this color to be printed, you can always jump to file options. And in the display, there is this option to print background colors and images. If I enable this and jump back to file print, you will actually see that this color will be printed if that's something what you want. Okay. And that's it. That's how you create this nice looking gift card in Microsoft Word. Thanks for watching.